Good day students, you yeah, are welcome to basic science class. Today we are going to be talking about electrical energy. We are going to be talking about electrical energy. Just as you have known that energy is the ability to do work. And you know that there are two types of mechanical energy, which is kinetic and potential energy. The electrical energy that we are going to be talking about today is a type of kinetic energy that is caused by moving electric charges. Again, electrical energy is a type of kinetic energy caused by moving electric charges. It will interest you to know that these moving electric charges are otherwise known as electrons. These moving electric charges are otherwise known as electrons. In a circuit, there is what we call movement of electric charges. And this movement of electric charges are used to power around electrical appliances in the home or even in any setting, be it at workplace, in the school, in industries, or anywhere. Electrical appliances can be your ion, they can be your water heater, they can be your bulb, they can be your lamps, they can be any of the normal home device that you use at home. Now, all appliances are connected to the source of electricity to get current. This connection is called a circuit. So basically, a circuit can be defined as a connection that has to do with a load. The load can be a form of a lamp or any electrical device. So in a circuit, we have a load we have a conductor, which is the wire that is used in conducting the electric charges or the electrons. And we also have the source of power, which is the battery or the cell. It will interest you to also know that two or more cells, a combination of two or more cells, is referred to as a battery. There are two main types of circuit connection, or there are two main types of circuits. The number one is the series connection, and the number two is the parallel connection. In series connection, the conductors are joined from one end to another so that the same electric current flows through them. In series connection, what you have is that the conductors are joined together in series. They are joined together one after the other such that if one of the conductor is cut off, it affects the general circuit. There won't be free flow of current to the hot, to the remaining of the circuit. That is the implication. So, the total resistance of resistors in series is calculated as RT, which denotes total resistance, is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. R1 stands for resistance 1, R2 stands for resistance 2, and R3 stands for resistance 3. So, in series connection, the total resistance is being calculated as RT is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. But in parallel connection, what happens is that the current divides into each conductors in such a way that even when you cut one end of the conductor away, it does not affect the current moving in the circuits. So in parallel connection, if you decide to do away with one of the conductors or one end of the conductors, it does not have any effect on the remaining conductors in the circuit. The total resistance in parallel connection is always is always calculated as an inverse. You have 1 over total resistance is equal to 1 over the first resistance, this is R1, and uh, plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, and so on. That's if you have three resistance. So again, the total resistance in parallel connection is calculated as Rt is equal to, uh, sorry, 1 over Rt 
is equal to 1 over how 1 plus 1 over how 2 plus 1 over how 3 and so on. I repeat, the total resistance in parallel connection, the total resistance in parallel circuit connection is calculated as 1 over RT is equal to 1 over how 1 plus 1 over how 2 plus 1 over how 3 and so on. Students, we have to talk about the components of a circuit. When we say component of the circuit, what are the elements or the major things that we can find in a circuit? Number one is what we call resistors. Number one is what we call resistors. A resistor is any material that does not allow or permit the free flow of current in a circuit. Anything that does not permit the free flow of current in a circuit is referred to as resistor. No wonder the word resist is also found in resistor. So what the resistor does is that it resists the free flow of current in a circuit. Another important component of a circuit is what we call fuse. Fuse. A fuse is a device that is used in a circuit to cut off unnecessary or excess current flow from the circuit. We all know about this in our homes. We have fuses that we use in our home appliances. If there is any unnecessary or excess current flow, what happens is that the fuse is going to be triggered off. And as a result, there will be no supply of current to the circuit anymore. So again, a fuse is a device that is used in cutting off unnecessary or excess current flow from a circuit. Another component of a circuit is ammeter. What an ammeter does is that it measures the amount of current in a circuit. It is usually connected in series with the conductors. Your ammeter measures the amount of current. It will also interest you to know that current is measured in ampere. So, your ammeter measures the amount of current in a circuit and it is always connected in series with the conductors so that it can measure the amount of current in the circuit. Another interesting component of a circuit is a voltmeter. Voltmeter, that will bring you to what we call voltage. What a voltmeter does is that it measures the voltage across a circuit. The chosen word, the word of use, or the best choice of word is what we call potential difference. So your voltmeter either measures the potential difference or the voltage across a circuit. Another important component is what we call lamp. lamp. What your lamp does is that it holds light. Your lamp holds light. And lastly, an important component of a circuit is batteries. Your battery is used to power the electric circuits. It's the source of energy. The source of electrical energy in a circuit is referred to as battery or a cell. Students, in modern, there is a modern device that has been introduced into the house circuits to increase safety in the use of electricity at home such that if there is a short circuit, a large current is drawn through the device, which eats up and breaks the circuit. This device is referred to as circuit breaker. A circuit breaker, again, is a modern device that has been introduced into the house circuit to increase safety in the use of electricity at home. If there is a short circuit, a large current is drawn through the circuit breaker which eats up and breaks the circuits. Some of such device will fail to reconnect unless the fault has been rectified. So your circuit breaker helps in preventing the unnecessary damage that would have happened to your home appliances. That unnecessary damage or that excess current that would have 
destroyed or break down your home appliances is being prevented by the circuit breaker. Students, finally, we have to look at what we call electric meter. Electric meter. Some of us use prepaid meter in our homes for billing. And some of us use postpaid meter for billing at home. Uh, an electric meter is installed in a house where the power holding authority, in the case of Nigeria, the power holding company of Nigeria, PACN, can assess and read them to provide bill for energy use. Again, an electric meter is installed in a house where the power holding authority can assess and read them to provide bill for energy use. When any device, any home appliance, such as your high end, is connected to the circuits and is switched on in the house, your meter starts to read. And you can read the current value consumed through the glass covering the meter. At this point, I would like to stop for the next class. Believe that you have learned something in this class. Thank you and God bless you.